the new moon is happening on Sunday. So we're going to go ahead and discuss the new moon on the Monday episode. We'll be here for as long as it takes so that we can strategize for our week, journal, and paint because that's what we do in Moon Magic and Mindfulness with Grace. And so I'm so excited to share in that conversation with you all. What are you looking to create this week? Someone came to share that she's trying to create more moments of uh, uh, magnificence. And I'm like, whoa, that sounds cool. Tell me more about that. Hello, Peter. And, you know, she's talking about how she is in such a flow creatively that even though she has the family to take care of and the clients and the job and the groceries and all these like earthly things, that's what I call them, right? Earthly as opposed to like, you know, more mental creative things as above, so below on the land of the living, right? And she's talking about how even though she's caught up in all of these real life adulting things, she's really looking forward to create more moments when she can sit down to create because she's so excited about what she's working on that time just what is it, right? Like, what's time? Because it just seems to stand still when we're in that flow, right? And and that's that is one of the aspects of of why this call this show is called Moon Magic, right? And mindfulness, and it's because we do experience those moments of magic, and we don't even realize. And so that was beautiful. I thought. I feel like I'm also caught up in that creative flow right now with some of the projects that I have going on, and I want you all to be in that flow, uh, right? What are the moments that you are trying to create? Are you trying to create? moments of peace? Are you in the hustle and bustle so much that you maybe would benefit from creating moments of stillness and quiet, moments where you can just be? Those are the types of questions that we like to ask on Monday, Monday, so that we can then ponder that intention for the rest of the week and really strategize you know, where in the agenda does it fit for us to do some of these things and to create some of these moments? Um, maybe you're, you want to create moments of more meaningful conversations because you're tired of small talk. Ooh, right? Well, in social media, there's a lot of small talk and there's a lot of really deep conversations. So if you've been having some superficial uh, small talk type of conversations. Maybe you want to create moments or interactions with the right people so that you can have deeper conversations. So this is the time to ponder what is really serving you well and what isn't. Um, who are the people in your life that are there to really bring something to the table and that you can bring something to their table. And it's a collaborative effort, right? Like life is not just um, about us doing things on our own. So let's go into the next topic, which is limiting beliefs. Dun, dun, dun. I wrote about it on my blog post today, and it has to do with the fact that we tend to limit ourselves Sorry, there's a bug around here because I live in the country, you know. We don't acknowledge the ways that we limit ourselves. And so the books and the content talks a lot about limiting beliefs such as I am not worthy, I am not good enough, I am not lovable. And some of these core beliefs come from childhood wounds. And that's okay. Those are important core beliefs that turn into limiting beliefs, right? Um, but there's other limiting beliefs that are more like day-to-day -day little things that we say like, oh, I can't do that. Well, you could if you wanted to, if you made time, and if you just sat down to do it, right? But we're so quick. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know is another one. How many times does someone ask you a question and without even thinking about the answer, without even looking and rummaging through your brain, do you automatically already say, I don't know right now. I just, I can't think about that right now. Like, but did you think? Did you think about it? Or did you just automatically say you don't know? 
So you're limiting yourself with these little things that we say so casually in conversation all day long. So that's two of them. I can't do that. I don't know. Um, another one that I shared in the newsletter was I'm hopeless. And, and this is really at the core of, of some of my expertise with hope. So that's really why I threw that in there, because a lot of us tend to be at a certain point in our lives where we really think there's no hope. And we may not call it depression because maybe we're not clinically diagnosed with depression, but we, re we feel really low. We feel like there's absolutely no motivation. We feel like there's absolutely no way out of a situation or a relationship relationship we may feel like there's just no answer and so we say it so casually I'm just hopeless so I might as well just not even try <sighs> right and we say it I, I hear it said so casually and and really my answer after so much research is it's a little bit argumentative I feel like and I understand that and I own it most importantly as a certified coach you know which is the American Psychological Association, in their research, they say they have no evidence of false hope. And what that tells me is that no one, thank you, what that tells me is that no one is hopeless. Absolutely no one is hopeless. Even if you feel like you are hopeless right now, the fact that there's no evidence of hopelessness means that no one is hopeless. And so that means that there is hope for you. So that means that we can just shift our mindset, shift our view, right? Instead of looking at this lane, let's go ahead and look at this one and see how we are going to maneuver it moving forward. And so it's a question of choice. Dun, 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 the adulting freedom of choice. <laughs> it's so daunting. I totally get it, right? But we limit ourselves. Yes, it's so daunting to be an adult. Look at us, right? And so that's, that's another limiting belief that I hear thrown out there so quickly. And it's like, no, you're not. You're not hopeless. There's so much hope for you. There's so much out there. Uh, another limiting belief that we tend to throw out there so easily is, I don't know about that. Okay, well, have you sat down to do some research at all, at any time? Or are you really just not interested? Ooh, right? Like, let's, let's call it what it is. Let's be honest in the way that we express ourselves. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, well, we live in the era of abundant resources. What a blessing to be able to research all of these things without even without even having to get on the car to go to the library, right? Now, are some of the resources available questionable? Yes, but are others reputable and there to really help? Absolutely. So it's a question of, you know, how much emphasis are you going to put on your research, so on and so forth? Are you really trying to do a good job or not? Again, choices mindset, effort put into what you're doing, all of these adulting things. But, you know, oh, I don't know about that. Okay, well, what can you do to know about it? Ding, ding, ding. You can research. You can find the answer. You can sit down and really spend some time to get to know the thing that you're saying you don't know so casually. It's like, I don't know about it. I'm sorry, but I can't help. <sighs> Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can hear Obama in my head. Yes, you can. And so it's, it's so easy how we limit ourselves. And the thing about limiting ourselves with some of these day to day phrases that we like to throw out there so casually is that we also limit our God, or the creator or the universe, however you want to call it right? When we limit ourselves, we are also limiting the miracles that are there ready to happen for us. The promises that are already there prepared for us to just walk and make our way to them. And we're limiting ourselves saying, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough about it. Oh, I don't want to do it or whatever. I can't today. Really? Have you really tried? 
to make an effort to try, to try, to try. <laughs> and I know that Yoda says there is no try, but at the end of the day, Yoda is a little character in a movie that is fiction and sci-fi. So there is try and there's beauty in the effort and there is merit in the effort because this is real life, right? And we get to experiment and we get to try and try and try again. Phrases like, that's just the way I am. Yes, Chris, absolutely. That's just the way I am limits growth, right? That comes from a stagnant mindset as opposed to the growth mindset. You're basically saying, I'm not interested in growing and evolving and becoming a better person. I'm happy just the way I am. But then when somebody says, but are you really happy? You're probably going to look at your life and say, no, I'm not happy. But you just said that that's just the way you are, which is kind of like definitive, do you want to be definitive or do you want to evolve and grow and change? Because we all have the ability to do so if you want it, right? If you are willing and able and open, right, to receive the change, all of the situations. And of course, you know, there's also the thought of like, what you ask you receive so if you ask for if you pray for patience you're definitely going to be given instances where you have to exercise patience and that's how that works right i mean that's what happened to me i asked for patience and god said you're going to wait for this and you're going to wait for that and you're going to wait for this and i had to wait my whole life for things right and so the, the there's another side of the coin if you're going to take a look at that but at the end of the day we don't want to be the ones limiting ourselves I feel like I think we can all agree us in this room and those watching we can all agree that I don't want to be the one limiting myself I already have enough limitations outside of myself right limited resources well we we, we don't have everything we need to work to get those things right so limited resources limited skills right we need to get to work on the skills so it's a process so as of today right we're limited and then the next time we want to learn a new skill we're going to be limited because we don't know the skills so it's a never-ending process right um you know i don't want to limit myself because there's already enough opposition out there, opposition in all things, right? And so how are you really maneuvering your words, your expressions in life, your content, your relationships, your moments of mindfulness, right? So that you don't limit your efforts, so that you know and recognize that you're giving it your all. How are you doing this? Or how are you not? That's a great place to start if you just change the dialogue and change the way you speak to yourself and others. So another one I shared in the, in the blog today, I can't quit. Why? <laughs> Why not? Uh, oh, because, you know, quitting is for losers or my dad used to really have a hard time about this. OK, so it's like you're pointing out all of these reasons in your life that have somehow taught you that quitting is wrong. But at the same time, quitting takes a lot of guts. Quitting takes a lot of courage. Quitting something or someone takes a real courageous person, strong person to do so. So maybe you're saying you can't quit because you're not ready. Okay, that's a great place to start. And then what can we do to get you ready? Because you're limiting your progress by simply just throwing your hands up and saying, I can't quit because I don't wanna be a loser. Well, you're being a loser because you're stuck in something that you don't like. How about that, right? Being stuck in something that doesn't serve you is like spending double the amount of energy not liking something or not believing something. We learned all of this when we were reading Chopra in my book club and, and we've been learning about it together. And it's about the fact that not believing on something or being negative takes double the amount of physical energy than it does to just be positive. And in part, it's because all of that negativity just really takes a toll on you. So why not try being positive for a change? 
you know, the, the thing about positivity is that it really just keeps propelling the wheel forward with more positivity, more moments of beauty, more moments of peace and happiness. And you just want more and more and more. And that serotonin and that oxytocin, it's like, woohoo, right? All of a sudden you're high on life and I'm just, I can't describe it. And so when you are stuck in something because you just don't want to quit because you just think that you can't how is that not a disservice to you and to your creativity and to your growth you put yourself in a box why would you do that and when you're in a box you can't grow you're literally covered inside of a structure that just doesn't allow for fluidity or for growth, or for elevation, what do you want to call it? All of these beautiful things, they all have a beautiful connotation to them, right? And so, yeah, it's going to be a great week with some of these thoughts in mind. Thank you. Thank you for all of the hearts. Because I really want everyone, and myself included, to get to believe these things on the daily. Like, enough limiting ourselves. Enough limiting each other. Um, you know, we tried something and it didn't work. Well, there's other ways to try it. Let's try all the, all the avenues available to try before we really just give up on something. It's already a beautiful week and I'm just so happy that you're all here and so happy that we get together every week. Episode 10, woo woo, two digits. I'm just so proud of all of us for coming together every single moon day to talk about our weeks, to ponder what we really want to do. Where are you dropping the ball? That's a great question. And we all drop the ball. There's nothing wrong with dropping the ball. The point is, are you going to pick it up again? Or are you just going to stare at it and do nothing? Right? That's the question. You can drop the ball as many times as it takes for you to learn to keep it in your hand. But are you going to pick up the ball or are you going to leave it there and just give up, right? None of us are giving up. We're going to keep trying. We want to grow and evolve. So it's already beautiful. And I'm so proud of you. So proud for how far you have come. So proud of all of the progress that you have made to this day. I feel like this particular episode is pretty deep um, and that's that's okay. But at the same time, it's such a privilege and a blessing to be the one that brings these topics and, and that asks these questions. And in the end, I don't just do it for my community, but I do it for myself. I need to hear these things. I want to believe that I am limiting myself in some of the things I say and that I don't want to limit myself. So what am I going to do to change that dialogue?